Hello my friends and welcome back. My name is Jessie and this is Science Will Save the World. I don't know about you, but I've been feeling pretty cooped up inside my house. So I thought that today we would go outside and do some backyard science. So come along with me, let's all go outside somewhere. So today, what we're talking about is a thing called biodiversity. Maybe you've heard of this word before. Uh, so think about the two parts. The first part, bio, just means anything that's living. It refers to any living thing, plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, you name it. The second part, the diversity part, means differences between things. So biodiversity just means the variety of life around us. It's all the different kinds of things in one place. In this case, what we're doing today is what's in your backyard or your neighborhood. So with biodiversity, the important thing to remember is that it's not about the total number of living things in a place. It's about the differences, the number of different kinds of living things. So that's a little confusing, but you can think about it like comparing the things in a cornfield. So you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different corn plants, which are the same species, versus a garden in your backyard where you might have fewer plants, but they're all different kinds of things like tomatoes and beans and carrots and whatever. So the backyard garden then would have a higher biodiversity than the cornfield. Make sense? And also we expect different places to have different levels of biodiversity. So think about comparing the biodiversity of let's say Antarctica versus a jungle. So I bet you would expect, I would expect maybe the tropical rainforest, the jungle, to have a lot more different kinds of species than Antarctica. Another thing you can think about is how you would expect biodiversity to vary by season. So maybe you could make a prediction about how many birds you would expect to see in your backyard in the summer versus in the winter. And I think you probably have a prediction of what you might expect then. Time for a biodiversity pop quiz. But you didn't know I was gonna do that. <laughs> so now I'm gonna give you two example environments with different kinds of species in each one. And it's your job to try to figure out which one has higher biodiversity based on the definition that we just talked about. So the variety of life or the number of different kinds of species in a place. You ready to play? Awesome. Okay, so environment number one, we will call it the Eastern Woodlands. Here are our species. We have a bullfrog. We have a bald eagle. We have, oh, an Eastern new. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I love them so much. We have another bullfrog. Put him right there next to his friend. We have a bullfrog tadpole. They're pretty cute. We have, oh, that's right, a third bullfrog. Bloop. We have a black snake. We have another bullfrog tadpole. And finally, another bullfrog tadpole, except this one has legs, so it's also very cute. All right, so that's all together in this Eastern Woodlands environment. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different animals. Sorry, I didn't have any pretend plants for this one. Okay, so we'll compare that environment to our second environment. We will call it the Southwest Desert. Here we go. In this environment, we have, boom, it's a mountain lion. Number two, we have a horned lizard. These guys are so cute. And also they shoot blood out of their eyes. More on that another time. Three, we have a ridiculously large scorpion for relative to all these other animals. <laughs> we have a desert bighorn sheep. Boop. Uh, we have a rattlesnake, which doesn't want to get in focus, but that's okay. And we have a saguaro. So all together, that's one, two, three, four, five, six different plants and animals in the Southwest desert. Okay, here's decision time. 
Which of these environments has higher biodiversity? If you said Southwest Desert, you are correct. And here's why. Well, the short answer is because of all these dang bullfrogs. So, so on this side, we had one, two, three, four, five, six different species. On this side, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different animals. However, one, two, three, four, five, six of those animals are all the same species. So in biodiversity measures, that only counts as one. Um, so one, two, three, four different kinds of species in this environment. Make sense? Six versus four, six wins. Cool? Let's go find out what your own backyard holds. All right, so two different levels of engagement on this one. Uh, the first level is the really simplest one. For that one, all you're gonna need are some paper and a pen. And so what we're gonna be doing today is just going outside. If you have a backyard, great. If instead you're using your street or your neighborhood, that's also awesome. Um, all you need is somewhere we can go and look for living things. So your job is gonna be to go outside and write down the names of all the different kinds of things you see. If you don't know their names, that's okay too. Just describe it. That's how science works. Um, if you're able, take a picture and maybe we can identify it later. Um, but the most important thing is to record all the different kinds of things. So that's level one. Level two, if you'd like to get a little more uh, in depth on what things are, and especially if um, you, your family wants to get involved with you, which I advise, it's super fun. Um, there are a couple of really cool apps that you could potentially use to identify things. One that I really like that's really easy to use is called Seek, S-E-E-K, and I'll show you an example of it. So this is the Seek app. When it opens, you'll see this screen, and you're gonna click on that camera icon down there, and it will open up a camera, so you agree to the things they remind you of, and then you go find a species to identify. Through this camera, you can see at the top, it's narrowing down its identification. And when it gets to species, you click on that camera button again, and it'll save the species for you. There it is. Hi friends. Uh, it's time to start our biodiversity survey. So here we are in my backyard. Um, I have my notebook, I've got my pen, I have my field assistant penny around the corner there smelling a cactus, which is very helpful. Um, and now I'm gonna take some time and try to identify every living thing I can find in my yard here. Um, some tips I have, don't forget to look underneath of things. So if you have rocks you can look under or logs, um, those are often very cool places to find organisms. Um, I also often make my list, I divide it into groups. So I might have all the plants I find, all the insects I find, all the birds, whatever, whatever. Um, one final thing, don't forget, if you don't know the name of something, that's totally okay. Just describe it. So it's, o it's okay to write like green bug or um, brown bird if you don't know what it is. As long as you can tell if it's different from something else, that's what really matters. Because remember, we're looking for the different kinds of species in this space. Ready to get started? Yeah, me too. So the results are in, and for my brief biodiversity survey, I found, well, one mammal besides me, that was Penny, I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different kinds of insects. I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 different kinds of plants, and one species of bird that I could hear singing. So. How many could you find? How many can you find? 
The cool thing about biodiversity is that you can come back out and do it again a different day and see if anything's changed. This is particularly interesting as we go from season to season. So we did it just now in April. Maybe we come back in two more weeks, it'll be a little bit different. So think about what you would expect and maybe make it a point, write it down in your calendar or something to come back outside into the same place you surveyed before and see if anything's changed. So one more thing. Um, so as I've mentioned before, I live here in the Sonoran Desert in Tucson. And the Sonoran Desert is actually really biodiverse. And part of the reason is because we have those things called sky islands, which if you saw, I think, episode two, you know a little bit about those. Well, my friends over at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum like biodiversity a lot and they like to learn about it and to teach people about it. So they've actually made a color color your own graphic novel about the biodiversity of the desert and it's free to print out and it was designed by a high school student here in Tucson and it's really really cool because it not only explains all of the cool biodiversity here in this place but it also tells you why it happens so I'm gonna link to that here in the bottom here um, in the, the video notes and so you're welcome to go and download it and print it out for free and have fun coloring it it's super fun because you learn and color at the same time, which are two of my favorite things. Um, that's all for today. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.